Hello everyone, welcome to part two of solving rational inequalities. So we have four minus x over x plus five is greater than or equal to two. So let's go through our little checklist uh, to determine what is it that we need to have the problem set up and ready to go. So the first thing, remember we need one fraction on the left side, which we have. And then the second thing, we need zero on the right side. Now that doesn't look like zero. So that means we're gonna to need to do a little bit of work first to get this properly set up. You must have a zero on the right side. So the first thing you can do is certainly just bring the two over to the left side by subtraction. So then you end up with this by subtracting two. So now we have zero on the right side but now, what do we have on the left side? Do we have one fraction? Be careful with that. It looks like we do, but remember two is two over one. We have two fractions on the left side. Uh, so here's what we have to do. We have to combine these. And again, how do you combine them? Well, we're just gonna subtract. And in order to subtract, don't forget with fractions, we need a common denominator. And common denominators are easy to find. All you have to do, remember, is multiply the denominators that you see. So 1 times x plus 5 is x plus 5. So that's my common denominator. So that means the first fraction, 4 minus x over x plus 5, this already has the common denominator. So now I just have to work on the 2 over 1. So remember how do you get a common denominator? you multiply the pieces to the fraction that you need. I need x plus 5 there. So I multiply that to the 1. And don't forget, whatever you do to the bottom of a fraction, you must also do to the top to balance the value. So x plus 5 over x plus 5, remember, is what? 1. So you're multiplying by a nice 1 there, which doesn't change anything. It keeps the value the same. Don't forget, greater than or equal to 0. All right, now simplifying. My denominator now is x plus 5 for both fractions. On top, I have from the first fraction, 4 minus x. From the second fraction, if you distribute the 2, you get 2x plus 10. And remember, you are subtracting that, so it's minus 2x minus 10, greater than or equal to 0. Last step, simplify the top. So we have x plus 5 on the bottom greater than or equal to zero. And we have minus x minus two x is minus three x. Four minus 10 is minus six. So now here is the expression that I need and the expression that I will use to do the rest of this problem. So now I have one fraction on the left side and zero on the right side. We are ready to go. So step number one, get the zeros. I remember the zeros come from the numerator. So you take the numerator, negative 3x minus 6, set it equal to 0. So that means we get negative 3x equals 6. Dividing negative 3, we get 0. Uh, the 0 is x equals negative 2. Then you got to find where is the function undefined. So remember, that's the denominator. The denominator cannot be 0. So you write x plus 5 can't be equal to 0. And we find that x cannot be equal to negative 5. Step 3. Now set up your number line. Remember, on the number line, we have negative infinity, positive infinity, and the values from steps 1 and 2 in order. So negative 5 first, followed by negative 2. That's my x line. On top of the x line, remember, we're going to write the sine of y, which, remember, could be positive, negative, zero, or undefined. So on top of the negative 5, that's where the function is undefined. On top of negative 2, that's, remember, a zero of the function, so the function has a sine of zero. All right, now... 
This line is now broken up into three sections. One, two, three. Remember, those sections are called intervals. So now you're going to pick a number in each interval, such as here, like negative six. In here, we could use negative three, negative four. And in this section here, we could use negative one or zero. Zero is nice. All right, so now you want to get the y values for those. So for negative six, the y value is negative 12. For x equals negative three, the y value is 1.5. And for x equals zero, the y value is negative 1.2. So on top of the number line, record the signs of those y values. So negative 12, positive 1.5, negative 1.2. And finally, the solution. So remember, it's the solution, it's all values of x such that what? Remember, go back to the bottom of the left side, and the expression that we simplified is greater than or equal to 0. So what does it mean to be greater than or equal to 0? Well, the greater than means anything that's positive, and the bar underneath means anything equal to 0. So now on your number line, circle those. Positive, 0. All right, so the positive sign corresponds to this segment or interval. So we're going to shade that in. And right here, this value corresponds to only the endpoint there at negative 2. So we're going to shade that in. It's a solid point because we're including it. So we're going to use a bracket. And then on the left of that at negative 5, I'm going to put an open point because remember the function, it is undefined there. So that will always be an open point or a parenthesis. So finally, my solution to this is all values of x such that x is between negative 5 and negative 2. And that's it. I hope you found this example helpful. There's one more example in part 3 of solving rational inequalities. Check it out if you need a little extra help. I am the Math Musician. Please subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Some are math and some are music with me on the piano. Thanks for watching. Take care.